What absolutely fascinates me in quantum physics is, again, maybe it's already wrong, I will say, this idea of, to put it in philosophical terms, uh, ontological incompleteness. For example, the point is not we cannot measure at the same time position and movement. That's for me not radical enough. It still means a particle has a measure in the position. We just can't, uh, movement and position, we just can't measure it. But what if in more radical reading, reality is in itself ontologically incomplete? The point is not that if you analyze reality to the end, you will get a complete, a complete description with everything at its uh, place and so on and so on. And as far as I can see, uh, uh, now you will ask me how does this link with my philosophy? Because it's a very unorthodox reading. In my reading, even of Hegel. <clears throat> the final the result is not you get the whole truth. The final result is that what you thought was just an epistemological obstacle, like we cannot get it all, just one aspect of the other. The final result is when you realize that what appeared to you as a limitation of your knowledge is defines already the reality itself. Reality is in itself incomplete. Now I follow debates and I know the problems with this. If she known in the United States, she being Sabine Hos Hosenfelder, the German one, her idea is, I'm sure you know a thousand times better than me, is uh, super determinism. Uh, and basically, her idea is, if I follow it correctly, on Einstein's line. Hidden variables and so on, we just don't know it all. Where I see an interesting point that she makes is, and now comes, Sean, my first question uh, to you. Some physicists, look, uh, uh, quantum, with whom I spoke, not as highly graded as you, insisted that all this focus on not the agent, what triggers a so -called, the so-called collapse of the wave function, that is a secondary unimportant problem. That, that you can even, this is the radical tendency, if I got it correctly, that you can uh, define collapse even in an objective way. What comes to my mind are so-called decoherence theories. Or another version is the quantity that as soon as the object is no longer at the, this uh, subparticle level, but becomes part of our reality, automatically uh, decoherence uh, uh, happens. Now, this brings me to another point. I hope we will we'll have time later to approach it, which is time and space. Do you agree? Because I was informed that this is also one of your topics. Is it true or not that this hidden variables Einstein view is more focused on space as a more primary dimension? Didn't Einstein even at some point propose the theory that what we perceive as time, time movement, is really just moving along a certain spatial line and so on. On the other hand, there are many others, and for obvious reasons it's closer to me, who claim that time is more radical, primordial. But let's begin with this, with what I told you. All this problem, and I know, uh, 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 I let's think so. Yeah, uh, a collapse of wave function, observer registration. Uh, when does it happen? Because I find all different versions, up to the cosmological one that it's God Himself who is the ultimate observer, no reality without God, and uh, to this uh, 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 
more modest version, whatever. Okay, teach me where I'm totally using my mind and tell me at least the state of the things today. I think this is very good because the time and space questions that you're raising are very, very good, but they come later. So the quantum mechanics collapse of the wave function questions come first. And to me, it's extremely embarrassing, but true, that physicists don't know what to think about exactly the questions that you are raising. So let me just quickly run through some of the options because there are sensible people who believe all of them. You know, the fundamental fact that we're trying to accommodate ourselves to is that we have a way of describing the world that is super duper successful with what we call a wave function, a quantum state, the Schrodinger equation, all this math mathematical apparatus. But then when we look at it, when we measure it, when we perceive it or experience it, we don't see that wave function. We see a position or a momentum, some observable quantity. Which is and this part is of completely our ordinary reality, what we see always. Well, we... Yes, I don't want to prejudice by deciding ah, what's ordinary yeah, yeah. reality yet, but we yeah. see things. And they, this, the things we see, I think what you're getting at is they do remind us of what we thought the universe was back in the days of classical mechanics. Newton would have said that there is a position, there is a velocity. Now we say, well, we observe those, but that's not how we discuss what's really going on. So I can quickly run through at least three options that are very much on the table. There is a very conservative way of going where you say there really are positions and velocities. Those are real things. And there is also something called the wave function, and it's a whole big complicated mess. And that is the hidden variables approach that, like you say, Einstein would have liked. Uh, there are still people who follow that, mostly in the context of what is called Bohmian mechanics. That's what so you have both the wave function Sorry and to particles. That's what I wanted to say. Uh, uh, how does Bo could this, uh, uh, this uh, uh, pilot waves, isn't this still? There are the substantial entity are particles or whatever, and you just accompany them as a kind of aura with wave punch, you know? You know, I have I have to be honest, I am not sympathetic to this I point of know, view. But uh, I am, so I have but trouble not defending a scientist. it. <laughs> For purely philosophical reasons, I'm not sympathetic. But let me now directly move to the third degree. But my KGB file on you tells me that uh, you are sympathetic to many worlds. Reading. That's going to be the third of the three options I give you. Sorry, I've given you sorry, one. Sorry, sorry, go on. Yes, yeah, sorry. Yes. One is hidden variables, just like you said. The second is more or less what you were pointing to yourself at the beginning there, which is the most radical one, which is essentially to deny the existence of reality, or at least to deny the existence of something that is mathematically precise and that pre-exists our observations to, to make this incredibly radical move that says that we can calculate the probability of what our observations will be, and we can then make them. And when we see them, they're real, but there was no such thing as what they were before we observed them. There was only this instrumentalist kind of calculation. And weirdly, even though that is clearly the most radical and hard to really wrap your brain around, that's the one that came first. <laughs> that's the more or less what Niels Bohr and Werner Heisenberg would have advocated, uh, you know, a completely epistemic instrumental approach to thinking Epistemic. about yes. quantum yeah. mechanics. Yeah. Yeah. Whereas the third option I will give you is uh, a happy medium where you say there's the wave function and that's it. There is nothing else, and the wave function does not collapse, <laughs> and there are no extra variables, and the Schrodinger equation, which tells you how the wave function evolves, is always true, just like Newton's laws were always true in classical mechanics. And the crucially important thing to make that viable is because when we look at things, like I said, we don't see the wave function, so if it's what is real, why don't we see it? And the answer is that we have a wave function ourselves, and we have superpositions of who we are, and they all exist. But the we that does the observing and the experiencing is only a tiny, tiny fraction of what is going on in the whole wave function. So we call this 
many worlds. And it is on the one hand, the most simple and straightforward working version of quantum mechanics. On the other hand, it makes you a little bit dizzy to think that all these different worlds are coming into being. And I would put super determinism and Sabina's theories, uh, which come from other people also, uh, as a fourth category, which is even wackier than the ones that I've told you about, but we can talk about them if you want.